Hello, I'm Dr. Greg Winteregg, CEO of the Private Dentist Alliance. I want to talk to all of you students out there today who are wondering what your future is going to be like as a career in dentistry, as an assistant, as a hygienist, as a dentist, where is this profession going with the rapid increase of the DSO movement? I'm here to tell you the PDA is going to help you and I want you to become a member today it is free. Now, why should you become a member? You're gonna get weekly video updates from me and you're gonna get regular updates of our newsletters from the Alliance on exactly what is happening and how we are going to help preserve and protect the private practice of dentistry. Now, to me, the most important advantage is you are going to get access to our job board. What is that? Our private practicing members all have access to our PDA job board which means if they have an opening in their private practice of assistant, hygienist, doctor, front office staff, they're going to be able to post it. And you're gonna be able to check up regularly. And as our membership grows, we're gonna be covering larger and larger territories across the United States. If you are looking for a job in any position in the office of a private practice, you need to become a student member today. It is free. Go to www.privatedental.com Dot org and become a student member today. You're going to love your benefits. Do it now. What is up, Vibe Tribe? This is your boy, Matt Havis, and I'm sitting here today to tell you about our new interview with Dr. Ken Serka. Dr. Ken Serka is a practicing dentist in the Philadelphia area. He owns the largest dental practice in Philadelphia. So we sit down with him today to discuss all things team building. Make sure you guys let us know what you think of the episode on Instagram. Hit us up at dental.student.vibes. We love the feedback. And remember, vibe on. Welcome back to another episode of the Dental Student Vibes podcast. I'm your host, Seth Kalish. And today, we have a very special guest with us. I also have Cole Herzik and Matt Havis. Today, our guest is Dr. Ken Serka. Dr. Serka has owned and operated his own dental practice in Philly for the past 20 years. His gentle demeanor in the office has translated into strong loyalty with both patients and staff. Before embarking on his professional career, he was born and raised in a small town near Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. After being accepted to the University of Pennsylvania Dental School, he moved to Philly where he has spent the last 21 years. He enjoys learning new dental techniques and has traveled to Germany, Africa, and throughout the United States to further his education. Dr. Serka, how are we doing today? Great, how are you guys? Great doing to well. see you. Great, well, I first, of course, I first got to see you when I had the Private Dental Alliance Conference that I went to in November, and you just blew us away. So we had to have you on. Awesome, glad to have you. Get, glad to be here, and um, you know, I think there's uh, different things that I can provide that many other dentists can't. You know, just staying positive and upbeat um, during these crazy times. So thanks for having me. Absolutely. And so Cole, uh, Cole was telling us uh, when he first saw you at the Private Dental Alliance, he said that you were like one of the best speakers. Unfortunately, Matt and I, we didn't get to go, but you know, Cole was there. Um, sounded like an awesome time. Sounded like you gave a, an excellent presentation. What was the presentation on, by the way? Um, there were two things. One was uh, 10 secrets that most successful dentists don't want you to know. Okay. That's okay. That's, <laughs> wow. I'm, uh, I'm in. <laughs> And, and the second one was really how to position yourself to retire at an early age. You know, for me, I was able to retire at age 40, even though I'm still actively practicing. Um, even though my practice is in Philadelphia and I have the largest practice in Philadelphia of all dental practices, I actually live in New York City. So I travel from New York City down to Philadelphia and I see patients just four days per month. 
So I've really established my practice. So I've hired other dentists to be able to work. Wow, that's that sounds like wow. really ideal. We were talking to, I don't know if oh you're familiar God. with uh, Dr. Paul Edgerson. But, yes. Uh, yeah, he runs um, the Dental Practice Heroes podcast. We were talking to him, we had him on, and um, he was, he's got the same goals. You know, I think he said four days a month, he's like really shooting for that. Yeah. So, you I mean, can make it happen, you know. That, and it's that, one of those 10 points. You really need to know where you're going. And that's the first, um, w first number one of the 10 step is know where your vision is, know what you want to accomplish, where you want to go. And as a dental student or someone just getting out of school, you might think, okay, well, where do I go from here and what do I do? And there's a couple of things that I think students or young dentists can do. And number one is look at what area you might want to work in. You know, because once you get established somewhere, you tend to stay there your entire career. That's pretty stable with most dentists. Um, the second thing is really to think, how many hours do you want to be working a week? What kind of a staff do you want to have? Do you want to have a very large staff where you're doing all kind of dentistry? Or do you want to have more of a low-key mom and pop type thing? So, you know, the world's yours when you get out there. Um, right now, I think, some people see it as a negative, which is going out into practice and maybe working for a DSO for a few years. You know, that's what I did. I, I did that for the first three or four years of my practice where I worked with a, a group that accepted every type of insurance. You get your skills down, you get decent pay, and you're able to see a high volume of patients to really get all of the types of dentistry that you may not have been exposed to in dental school. Right. Okay. Um, so you mentioned uh, trying to figure out your ideal practice and like ideal number of days per week. So do you think starting out that young dentists should shoot? Because, you know, like now DSOs are asking, can you work six days a week, some weeks, that sort of thing, you know? So do you think it's ideal to try and keep it very uh, short, concise days per week in the beginning or just try and really get your skills up or how would you, how would you say young dentists go about that? I would say time is your biggest asset. And when I say that, when you're way younger, like when I first started out, I was working Monday through Saturday and I worked Monday through Saturday for the first few years. And then I decided, you know, I'm going to open my own practice. And so what I did is I worked at that one practice eight to five, and at six o'clock at night, I would go into my own practice that I started from scratch and I would work from six to nine at night. Oh, wow. So, wow. Working Monday through Saturday and you just do what you have to do. And I did that for the first 10 years. 10 years. Wow. Yeah, I did it for 10 years. I paid off my student loans in less than eight years, which I had 200,000 in student debt then. I know you guys have way more than that at this point which is crazy, but yeah, is crazy. You, know, you just have to, you just have to decide I'm going to pay it off in this many years. And that's mm -hmm. what I did. I said, in eight years, I want to do this. So when I went and I, you know, you're graduating as a dentist, like 26, 27 years old, and I worked hard for 10 years. So now I'm 37 and I could technically retire at age 40. Right. And it wasn't just through dentistry. You know, you have to learn how to, use the income that you're getting and live below your means and taking that money and investing it. Mm -hmm. And for me, investing it in real estate is actually what I ended up doing and right. you can make a lot of money from real estate. It's right. even now you, you look at the economy now, um, the number of homes on the market has decreased. So it's not a buyer's market right now as we're talking. However, long term, we talk about like, OPM, other people's money, you know, mm -hmm. borrowing a, a small amount at a low rate at this time and putting it into real estate long term can appreciate for you. Right. But you have to be careful because there's a lot of people that take a lot of risks with real estate and, and they think that a large house, for example, is an asset. And mm -hmm. an asset is only something that's, that's creating income for you. So I, I purchased commercial properties. Okay, so you did all commercial. Did you ever do any multifamily, anything like that? Um, yes, actually what I did in Ocean City, New Jersey, I bought um, a 
a failing hotel, a 10,000 square foot hotel, and I converted it to 10 condos. And then I sold the condos off one by one. Wow, nice. That's How long did that take years. to do that project? That's pretty intense. <laughs> a lot you said of work. five years, yeah. It took five years, yeah, yeah. every weekend almost for five years. Oh, it sounds like a huge headache. Huge headache. Yeah, a huge headache. <laughs> <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> but worth it though. Oh, worth it. You know, when you're forming your dental team, for example, you have to have a good attorney. You have to have a good accountant. You have to have, um, for you guys as young dentists, having a mentor that you can ask anything of, that you're going to get a straight answer from, you know. And unfortunately, I think there's a lot of um, either, you know, unfortunate situations that we dentists go through and then we pass it on to the future generations of dentists saying you know dentistry is not fun anymore mm -hmm. the people i hang out with love dentistry they love what we do they love the energy that other dentists bounce off of each other and we help each other and if you have that mindset that you don't have competitors as far as other dentists that surround you and you're here to work as a team it's a great ride Right. And that's what I would do is I would suggest, you know, any young dentist to just learn as much as you can. Um, in dental school, you might not have had much experience with a certain area of dentistry and it makes you really afraid. For me, I didn't know how to do root canals when I graduated. I graduated from UPenn and I didn't know how to do root canals. So there's a guy um, in New Jersey that I heard was very, very good. Um, and I went and I took every course I possibly could with root canals. Mm -hmm. And with knowledge, you gain power. And with knowledge, you have certainty on how to do them. It's my favorite thing to do now, you know, that and veneers. Right. I'm doing right. them because I find that they're easy. So what, what uh, CEs uh, or courses or whatever did you use for uh, root canals? For um, it's been many years since mm -hmm. I did that. But yeah. um, it was really, when I graduated school, it's whatever I felt very uncomfortable with is what I ended up taking. So a lot of cosmetics, because you can't really go and do cosmetics um, right out of dental school. You, right. know, you really don't know what you're doing. Um, however, you know, everyone had to do their first case at some point. So I would say read up on it. If you're doing a patient for the first time for veneers, you know, I would take a pre-model, like take a model or, or take an impression for the model and prep the model. Mm -hmm. And then I would show it to a dentist that I knew and show them the before and after and said, here's how I'm planning on prepping this patient. What do you think? And then you practice like that. Even now in my practice, if I have a new dentist that's coming in and they have a patient that they're planning on doing cosmetic work on, they do photos and they do a pre-impression, pour up the model, then they prep the teeth and they show me. That's right. the easiest thing to do. But you're going to have to, at some point, just dive in and do it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, when you were first learning how to do this, how did you find that mentor that you would show the models to? Was that from like a, a local club or something like that? Or how did you find that? Um, what I would suggest doing is you guys just reach out to a dentist that you're looking on um, Facebook or Instagram that's doing something that if you read their comments, the things that they're commenting on in the dental field, if they're positive comments, that would be someone I would reach out to. <laughs> That, that, hey, that's great advice because there's definitely oh, always positive comments yeah. everywhere. There's a lot of criticism that goes on there's over a lot of criticism. social media and sites. Yeah. You are exactly correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's what you have to look at. You have to look at the source of the person because we're a, a combination of the positive people around us. So if you're, if you're hanging out with two or three negative people, a huge percentage of your personality is become, going to become who you're surrounding yourself with. Right. Right. It's inevitable. So why would you go and tag yourself to someone just because they're a famous dentist or they're famous this or they're great at this? You have to really look at, you know, the, the tone of the person, the individual themselves and the vibe that they're exuding. Because if you're connected to the wrong thing, you leave them and you'll have this thought in your head like, I can never be as good as him. Mm -hmm. Instead of it should be that person should be lifting you up. Right. So look on social media. If they're lifting the others up, great. If they're mm -hmm. putting other people down, I would stay away from them. So how about this? Can you give me any examples that some guys that you look up to? Um, I don't know if you know Gordon Christensen. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Of course. Oh, yeah. 
Okay. He unfortunately was at, uh, no, fortunately he was at the conference for everyone, uh, but we unfortunately were not able to go on Friday since we had school. Um, so oh. we, had, we actually unfortunately missed Gordon Christensen, but we were looking forward to it. But no, we definitely know who that is. That's yeah. the godfather right yeah. there. Okay. So <laughs> Gordon and I, you know, we've spoken together twice so far at conferences. Mm -hmm. And when I was in dental school, so we're going back a good 23 years, I flew out to Provo, Utah, where his practice is, and we worked together for a week. Oh, so well. wow. If you, if you just invite yourself to dentists that you find are successful and say, hey, why don't we do something together? You know, why don't, hey, Dr. Serka, next time you're down in Florida, why don't we get together? Sure. Mm -hmm. Why uh, not? Hey, Dr. Serka? <laughs> How about next time you're down in Florida, why don't we get together? <laughs> <Sounds good. laughs> there we because go, perfect. I mean, the, the whole thing is, is everyone wants to feel important. Everyone wants to feel heard. Even us dentists, you know, you're, you're locked up in your office for who knows how many hours a day, 40 hours a day. And who do you talk to? You talk to your one or two assistants and your hygienist and you go back home. But when you have opportunities to really spread your knowledge to other people, it makes you as the speaker or as the, the seasoned dentist feel important as well. And then you have some importance and you're able to convey that to other people. When you're talking to patients and even your friends, there's really only three things that people want in life. And one is to feel like they're being heard without judgment. The other one is just feeling important. Whatever they tell you, they want you to acknowledge it and not fight them on it. And third is just being loved. Like, treat the person the same way that you would want to be treated. And if you do those things with your patients, with your staff, with your friends, you'll find all of a sudden you're a well-liked individual and you're in better communication with everyone. Right. And it's like the, uh, what's that word that they say don't use in uh, like your resume? It's synergism, right? But that's what happens when you support other people. You can accomplish more, you know, than just by yourself. There's a lot of work on resumes I see, and I just take my <laughs> <laughs> right. right, and that's the big thing is uh, when I originally approached you, it's so funny you should say that. Invite yourself. You know, when you spoke at the Dental Alliance, I was blown away. Like we have an episode on our podcast on it where I talked to the guys, and they were like, "We can, we could see your excitement," and you described him, and you were so engaged because that's what it was. I was so taken aback by what you had to say and you know the ease in which you presented it and I really formed a connection I didn't even know you at that point but I felt I felt you at that moment and I wanted to reach out because I knew that you would be able to spread these great vibes to we've established this Facebook group and it's nothing but positivity and trying to you know express to dental students across the world you know as much knowledge as we can to just like you said to learn from previous mistakes that dentists have made and dental students to then go forward so that we as individuals can be the best generation that there can be. So we just want to, you know, continue that positivity. So that was my invitation. I want to reach out to you and, you know, include you in this because you have a great voice and a great positivity to include. Thank you, Cole. Appreciate that. I agree. Like with our, with our Facebook page, we try to keep everything positive. We don't want any negative comments because you look at some of these other like groups, I'm not going to say any names, but like they, they just see a new post. I'm like, oh, we got another. They, get all, they all get excited to jump on board and start commenting yeah. on it, you know? Yeah. And it's like, and I mean, I guess we could speak as students where we see that and mm -hmm. it can't be good for the field to do that. Like somebody posts something, like whether it's a younger dentist or whatever, and they're looking for advice and what should I do? What should I do differently? And immediately, you know, it's like, you can give advice and everything, but you got to do it constructively, like when respectively, because, you know, you, you may be an older dentist, but you're still colleagues, you know, you're, you're still you know, in this together. And I feel like at some points, like people might, especially young dentists might get intimidated to post for what some people have to say. Cause that could be pretty, you know, I, what's what I'm, I guess like not, not very tactful with how they, they speak. And it's, it's almost disrespectful. And it makes me not want to post. Like if I had a question, I would want to find like a haven where I could post and not be, you know, poached on. I, I totally get what you're saying because mm -hmm. I think you have to look at the intention of the dentist responding to the post. So you mm -hmm. pose a question and then you get attacked. It's like, you know, your, your intention is to find information and to mm -hmm. get help. So why would a dentist go and do that? But I've seen that as well. Mm -hmm. you know? um, I, I like what you, what you were saying about being positive. 
like the, the positivity, you know, it's like you catch more flies with honey. So I, I mean, we just gravitate towards, you know, positivity and stuff like that. Like Cole was saying, like, I, I really am upset that we missed your uh, presentation. And, and one thing that Cole just said is, um, you know, about making mistakes. Um, when I last spoke with Gordon, which was about six months prior to that, what my presentation was on was all the mistakes that I've made over the years and how not to repeat them. And so most dentists don't go out there and say, these are all the things that I've done wrong. They do just the opposite. Here's why I'm great. Here's all my perfection. Here's my photos that I'm putting out there that I'm saying haven't been modified, but yet they have been. I mean, we, we right. know these things. Yeah. But yet, you know, for me, I want to be as transparent as possible because it is extremely difficult if you get out of school and you listen to what everyone else is saying. Because you have, yes, you have student loans. Yes, you have um, what other concerns you have. However, um, there is a need for people to hire you. I mean, there's a couple of things I'll, I will tell you. Um, just get, last night, my one staff member, and we can discuss this if you'd like, is my one staff member is a little concerned about coming back into the office because of COVID-19. Right. So, you know, everyone's on unemployment right now. And, you know, we've given the opportunity to the staff member to come back in because there is work that needs to be done. That's marketing, getting the website together, things like that. Um, and this person's not comfortable coming back right now but I need someone. So I posted an ad last night. I had 77 responses. Wow. I've scheduled seven interviews and wow. we're all doing them on Skype or Zoom or Face FaceTime. So, you know, there is a need. The second thing, if you're looking on some of these blogs regarding hygienists, they're afraid to come back into practices. There's two ways to look at that as a, a business owner. One is, okay, well, what am I going to do? Uh, oh my gosh, I have all these patients that need to be seen. But I think the smart thing dentists can be doing right now is looking at recent dental grads that we might not be in a position where we can hire you full-time as an associate dentist, but why not have you in the office three days a week doing hygiene and the other two days a week you're there and you're learning from what we're doing. Mm -hmm. So there are many opportunities, I think, right now. Okay, so let me ask you a question about that. Um, how would you do the, how would you structure the compensation? Because would you just do like base pay? Because obviously you wouldn't have any like percentage of production, right? Or um, if, if you were one of those new grads, right? Uh, what I do is I base production on a percentage. It, there's a guaranteed base for anyone, even right out of school at 70, in my office, I'll share with you what I pay. Mm -hmm. It's 75 bucks an hour. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is it's on a sliding scale depending on your production. And, and I'll explain this and may be clear if you might need to rewind this and look later, but it's 75 bucks an hour. Mm -hmm. If you're working one to two days a week, you're getting paid 75 an hour plus 10% of your production. Gotcha. So that's one to two days a week. It's 75 an hour plus 10% of your production. As soon as you hit three or more days a week, you're on a sliding scale which means you're getting 27% if you're producing 60,000 and then the percentage goes up. So you're getting the next percent, like 27% if you're producing 70, 28% okay. if you're producing 80. Yeah. Um, you guys sometimes might hear like, oh my God, like that doesn't make sense. Circa is paying someone what, 28% of what they're producing. And I'm hearing I can go to a DSO and they're paying me 40%. Mm -hmm. or 38% or something like that. The difference is you have to really look at the historical production of a dentist. And what I mean by that is ask the dentist if you're in for an interview, can I see the production report of the last dentist in this position? Because what you're trying to um, decide is if I'm going to hire you at 27% and they're going to hire you at 35%, you might want to take that job 100% straight away. But when you look at their fee schedule, you might be only producing a crown for 700 or $800. Whereas in my office, a crown's $1,877. So if you're getting 27% of 1,800 versus 35% of 600 or 700, there's a big right. difference. Gotcha. And so 
you know, the percentage is something that really um, is off, I think, you know, because I've even offered positions to recent grads and they're coming to me and saying, oh, well, I was offered 39% or 40% at this office and you're offering me a base rate of 27%. There's no way I would take a job here. And I'm like, look at the bottom line. And that's what I would suggest you guys do. Mm -hmm. Dr. Sirk, where can I apply? <laughs> <laughs> and, right. and that's, why, that's why I think you have to use the opportunities with DSOs or an office that um, is not participating, I'm sorry, that is participating with insurance to really go and get your skill set up and get your speed up. Um, my practice, we're different. We don't accept insurance benefits at all. Um, we get on average 137 new patients a month and we're not participating with any of their insurance. So if someone's telling you you can't get patients, you have to, you have to participate with insurance, that's definitely not true. Yeah, that's, that's an unbelievable number with no insurance. That is yeah, crazy. That's but, crazy. But Dr. Serby, you actually had uh, on our phone conversation the other day, you had a great uh, sentiment that I'd like to share with everyone while we're on this topic of like positivity and spreading the good vibes. So you were saying that, you know, we could look at this COVID-19 pandemic as a negative, which is a lot of people, unfortunately, are looking at as, but we should be looking at it on the positive, especially those in the dental community. So, you know, you said that quote about, you know, you need to get out there and learn. Could you elaborate a little bit on that? You know, what you mean and, you know, how, you know, students and even professionals could do that? I think there's a lot of things we can do. I mean, we're, we're never going to have six weeks or more where we're sitting around doing nothing. So what... I think you can do is if you're a dental practice owner, you can get together your policies, which are set ways of doing everything. You can call your, the dental school that you graduated from and say, hey, I want to do continuing ed. What free continuing ed do you have at this time? I've actually completed 33 hours of continuing ed in the last two weeks through the University of Pennsylvania. And the best, and, and a lot of it is on things that I am not, really keen on. Again, the things that I don't know very well are what I like to do continuing ed on, and sleep apnea is a big thing right now. Um, the nicest one that I did was a five-hour um, continuum with 40 oral surgeons throughout the United States, and they were talking about how they're dealing with COVID-19 and this pandemic and what they're actually doing in their practices. And what was interesting is all of the oral surgeons that spoke said not one of them had used their handpiece in the last several weeks. So they're doing fractures, they're doing trauma, all without using a handpiece because it's aerosoling the virus. And if the oral surgeons aren't using it, it, it kind of raised a red flag in my head saying, well, if they're that concerned about it, then maybe we should be more concerned with you know, COVID-19 at this point. And then that's when I jumped on and I started learning as much as I could and implemented a lot of changes in my office to make sure everyone's safe. But going back to what you can do during this time to keep your vibe up and to do things, you know, don't stay locked down, you know, don't stay inside, get, find a, a minute to go outside every day, go for a walk, wear your mask, of course, if you're in a state that's required to wear a mask, um, stay in communication with people. I have a saying, you're only as alive as your communication. So if you're That's good, I like that, I like that. You're only as alive as your communication. The more people you talk to, the more you're actually a living, breathing being to other people. But if you're sitting back and you might have all this knowledge, you might be the smartest guy in the world, and if you're sitting on your couch doing nothing, no one's in contact with you, so no one knows anything. Right. This has also really increased our ability to reach out into the community and to do good things to the community. You know, we just um, sent lunch to a hospital in New York, NYU Langone. We sent lunch to them last week. They posted it on their Facebook. And then this week we sent lunch, well, last week again, we sent lunch to Jefferson Hospital, which is here in Philadelphia. Um, there's this group called Swab Squad. I don't know if you guys saw it on Ellen DeGeneres, but it was a group of uh, nurses that were doing the swab test for COVID-19 in the streets of Philadelphia. And they put together this dance routine and then Ellen had them on her show. And so 
what's kind of cool is next week on Facebook, um, the, the hospital where she had them on, we actually provided them lunch. It happened to be that same day. So they're posting something about us and Ellen on Facebook. So it gets some PR out there. Right, there you go, that's perfect. Yeah, you have to find ways to help people in this time. There's a lot of people in Philadelphia that are donating food to um, undocumented immigrants because the undocumented immigrants aren't getting any food. They're not getting any help during this time. So there are groups here in Philly that are reaching out to them. You know, For me personally, I've um, sent like a $50 gift card to all my staff members for Grubhub. Mm -hmm. And on Grubhub on the website, you can actually take like a selfie and write a, a sign and they're personalized. And so I sent them to all of my staff. You know, it's just little touches, I think, at this time that you have to do. Right. That's awesome. That's awesome. I, you know, I haven't really thought about, um, I mean, we haven't really discussed with a lot of people how they're going to be affecting the rest of the community. We've really just kind of touched on what are you focusing on in your office? And I think that you've given some great examples about how you're being active in the community during this time, you know? So. Uh Awesome. Thank you for being so positive and like you spread so much positivity to everybody. So thank you so much, Dr. Circa. Thank you. A vibe drive. This is your boy, Man Havis. We're back at it again. We hope you enjoyed that great interview with Dr. Ken Circa. That is one of my favorites. And make sure you guys leave us some feedback and hit us up on Instagram at dental.student.vibes. And we love to hear from you. We want to know what's going on in your head. Let us know. Let's make this the best podcast we can for you. And remember, vibe on. Attention pre-dental students. Over 12,000 applicants each year apply to dental school. Out of 67 accredited schools in the United States, an average of only 90 students per class earn the privilege of acceptance. As former applicants who struggle through the rigorous ADSAS process ourselves, we understand the hard work it takes to be one of the lucky few to get accepted. That being said, we are happy to announce that we are now offering pre-dental mentor a program designed to give back to the dental community and give you the best chance of getting accepted to the dental school of your dreams. Our brand new pre-dental mentor program includes a team of five coaches who have all been a part of the AdSAS application within the past three years. Pre-dental mentor offers essay reviews, mock interviews, resume editing, secondary application editing, DAT prep, a personalized schools list, and an application checklist. To pre-order, slide into our DMs and get 30% off before June 1st. Contact us at dental.student.vibes on Instagram or email us at dentalstudentvibes at gmail.com. We only have 25 spots, so sign up before it's too late. We sincerely thank you for your support over the past year and are extremely happy to have the opportunity to give back. We were just in your shoes not too long ago.